Okay, so uh, welcome again to Monroe Live. Uh, we're still working on the um, we're still working on the Mach -E. We're finding some good things and some stuff that maybe not so good. So we're gonna uh, look at the good and the bad here um, on the uh, on the trunk area or the hatch area. So let's have a look first off at one thing that um, maybe uh, maybe wasn't as good as it could have or should have been. So this is called a scuff plate. This thing here goes over the top of the sheet metal in the back of the car. So when you look at it initially, when you look at it initially, it looks just fine, right? So you see that um, you see that it's got places for two bolts, and um, and you think, oh, well, that's a pretty good idea. Not not a bad idea, anyways. I would have liked to seen it snap on, but let's say it's. And then you take it off, and you go, oh, what? Why do I have these big brackets? And what about these bolts holding everything in place? And you go, gee, uh, something doesn't look right. So this is what happens when the interior people and the sheet metal people don't quite talk to each other at the right time. This, this carbuncle right here is something that's done when the communication falls off between the engineering groups. So all engineering is done is in silos. That's kind of like the way we, we do it in, in North America, or sorry, at the bigger companies here in North America. And so you wind up with little things like this because if this guy isn't talking to that guy and he doesn't put a little bump up for that, for that threaded fastener, then something else has to be kludged on. And we actually, when we were working with General Motors, we actually showed how many brackets were on a car in red. And, uh, and quite frankly, it was hard to find the, any other color inside the car except for red. Brackets are a crutch or a communications crutch. So this is not so good. I, I really uh, wish that they wouldn't have, uh, would have talked a little bit more. And I really would have liked to have seen this being, like I say, something that could have gone on there and went, and it's done, but they didn't. So the, the, the next thing that I'd like to maybe show you is um, right here. This is something we haven't seen before, but it may be a good idea. Um, if we look down there, you can see there's two pins. And then when we look up here, um, you can see that there's a wedge right here. And so what that does is drives um, the centering, if you like, between the, um, between the, the, two, uh, the two, two rear quarters. And this then becomes a much easier way of aligning the, um, the hatch to the rest of the car. Another thing that, that I like is these uh, bumpers. These are, uh, these are here so that uh, you can gauge the gap down below. And these ones move really well. So what you do is, and I'll put this back up because we can't get that thing open if we, uh, if we don't. So, um, so what you do is you bring it down and when you slam it into position, this will be in the right place and then you can run it down with a screw. So we like that. That's, that's kind of a cool thing to, to, have, uh, to have in place. But now um, what we'd like to do is maybe have, um, have Ben talk to you a little bit about these uh, Hinkle um, uh, attachments uh, for closing out what we call a rat hole. So these, this is a good idea too. Okay, so what, they, what Ford has done with Hinkle is they've developed a product that will go into any corner that it, corner that's really hard to get a robotic arm into with any sort of liquid um, liquid filler. So this black plastic piece that you see here is a nylon 6-6 injection molded piece and they will then injection mold that with a groove on the underside of it. It will go to the next step of the manufacturing process and that groove gets filled with a uh, heat activated expandable foam. So what they'll do on, at Ford at the assembly line is they snap this into place prior to it going through the cure cycle for the paint. And when it goes through, uh, it's hot enough that it expands all this foam and fills in all of the gaps so that you don't have any holes in your body and white helps with NVH. Um, and it's, it's much more consistent than the liquid applied method. Uh, you can also see down in here, this is typically something that's used inside of channels. You can see the back two pins sticking out here of another piece that's been done the, the same way and a little bit of foam coming through. So where they can't get at 
uh, get at the sealant that needs to be applied, they're using this product. And we are pretty sure that uh, this is a Henkel product. We're not 100% sure, but we've seen, yeah. seen other Fords use Henkel before. Henkel is one of the better guys in the marketplace for this sort of stuff. Anyway, you can also notice here too, if you look down at this gray area, um, that's called pumpable. And um, a lot of times I'll throw mm, some serious rocks at different companies because they did a bad job. That is a good job. And the other thing that you can look at is these, what look like stripes, they're actually uh, also a pumpable and they're for NVH. And there's, uh, there's nothing here that's, um, that's kind of like put to chance. The reason that these go in one direction or another, or maybe are cut off in a certain area, this is, um, this is tuning that you do with um, CAE, computer aided engineering. And this can tell you um, where you're gonna get a hum or drumming or oil canning, a bunch of different terms for in noise vibration and harshness, NDH. Th they did a good job here. So we're pretty, pretty happy with what Ford did as far as the pumpable, the NVH, and the Hinkle part, uh, products. All right, and if we take a look forward a little bit at the second row seat, the center support for the second row seat is attached here. This is the hinge point. This is a fixed seat. It doesn't slide, so it just needs the one position. But uh, you can see a uh, second piece has been attached over top of this bracket and that's to help with any sort of crash requirements that they have. And just locally reinforcing this piece is a much more effective way than making the whole sheet metal piece that you can see is very large, thicker and stiffer. Um, as you look a little bit outward, you can also see that they have some EPP at the front corners of the seats and they're using molding into that EPP, a wire harness trough for the seats. So that's a very uh, clever way of routing those into the seats and not having to add any extra clips. Just uh, before we get off it, um, EPP stand is, stands for expanded polypropylene. Um, so that's, uh, that's something, we use a lot of terms that people don't really understand, but EPP is something that's quite a good way of, of getting rid of noise and, and vibration and harshness. But I really like the idea, like Ben just said, of, of, of using it as a trough for, uh, for a wire guide. All right, and then looking back a little bit further on the rear wheel well, where they've attached their NVH, these clips are dual function, so it's not just attaching the NVH. It's also a mount for the wire harness that runs to the rear of the vehicle and up, uh, up to the lift gate, and they're doing that on both sides of the vehicle. So again, a, uh, any part that can serve dual function is a much better designed part. It eliminates the need for repetitive items. So anyway, um, this is a little quick review of what's going on here. Um, uh, we're gonna be talking a little more about some of these electronic uh, boxes. We, we're getting a little more information from uh, some of our buddies. And we wanna make sure that, uh, that everything is gonna be um, absolutely correct when we start talking about some of them because they don't really, uh, uh, they're not, it's not a system that we've ever seen before. So anyway, thanks again for watching uh, Monroe Live. If, uh, if you can, uh, find your way clear uh, to, uh, to click the subscribe button, that'd be wonderful. And um, hopefully in the next video, we're gonna be talking a little bit about maybe um, getting a hold of a, um, of a Tesla Plaid. Lots of people have been talking about it. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll have a video on that specifically. Anyway, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, you can continue uh, tipping those cashiers if you could, and we'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.